Hey everybody, so June is Pride Month and you are probably seeing flags, rainbow flags everywhere. They are in logos of companies. There are even some churches that are displaying them. They are all over social media. So today we wanted to discuss what is the symbol of a rainbow? What did it originally mean? What has it come to mean? And what sort of spiritual warfare is going on behind this symbol? So today we have with us Stephen Black, my dear brother in the Lord, Stephen, it's good to have you on. It's always good to be with you, Kendra, and all of you guys at AFS. You guys rock. Yes, if you guys don't know, uh, Stephen Black is um, from First Stone Ministries, and if you haven't yet seen in his image, his story plays heavily in that film. Um, but Stephen is, uh, tell me if I get this term right, Stephen, you are an expert in vexiology? That's correct. And I most people, expert, but I've studied it. Yes. <laughs> you have studied this, and yes. you wrote an article um, on First Stone's website called "The Prophecy of Pride," and it's all about the history of a rainbow. And we wanted to have you on to discuss that. So, first of all, what is vexiology? Well, it's the study of banners or the the idea of ethnicities behind uh, a banner or a flag. So it's the idea of people groups that are recognized or organizations that are recognized by flag. And uh, it's, you know, a lot of flags have symbolism in it. And uh, it's certainly true of this thing that we call, they call it, like you've been mentioning, a, a rainbow uh, flag, but actually it's a, it's a, it's the pride banner, which is right. very interesting. Well, in preparation for this discussion today, I did a little research of my own and I found this video on YouTube that was going through all of the different variants of the pride flag. And they had 94 of them, yeah. 94. This has gotten crazy, a little out of hand, but anyways, let's talk about the original symbol of the rainbow. Um, where does uh, the rainbow come up in scripture and what what does it mean? Well, um, it, of course, was the symbol that God gave to Noah in Genesis after the flood with the atmosphere. Obviously, uh, if you take the Bible literally, which I do, is that something changed where now the atmosphere was going to produce the downfall of rain. Mm. And with that, we have what happens uh, scientifically with the rays of the sun going through our atmosphere uh, with moisture that brings about what is called the, the bow. Interesting is the rainbow is also around the throne of God. Maybe mm. I'm getting a little ahead, but... Um, it is, it is the symbolism of the holiness of God. Um, it is also specifically in Genesis was the promise that God had set his bow in the sky. In other words, changing the atmosphere, changing the way that we would live on planet Earth, that he would no longer flood the earth with, with the judgment of water that would actually uh, fill the entire earth again. And so that's wow. that's where we see that is right after the flood, and and I do believe that it was there was a worldwide flood that was catastrophic uh, that gave us you know uh, amazing uh, land uh, anomalies and and uh, valleys and even canyons like the Grand Canyon, and so there's more now scientific evidence to to say that there was. So I did digress a little bit with the flood, but the idea is that God is faithful, mm. God is love, and that the, the rainbow is the idea that he has redemption and cleansing in mind. And that's a, another thing that people don't really understand about those, those beautiful colors in the sky. And the actual rainbow has at least 10 colors in it, hmm. um, which actually the number of 10 in throughout scripture is also a symbolism of judgment. And um, But the natural rainbow in the sky, when we see it, has anywhere from 10 to 12 colors, which is, those are very interesting numbers uh, because it's much more than six. Hmm. And that is a number that we need to look at as well in this discussion. 
Wow. There's some really great words that you brought up, redemption and the mercy of God. Right. Um, and it's it's such a shame to see a symbol that was meant to be that, to, to be polluted. Um, I, I love rainbows. And my husband and I, every time I see one, he laughs because I have to call him and be like, do you see it? Look, where are you? I just love the symbol of a rainbow. Yeah, and I think the many- double rainbow, right? Oh yeah, the double, double rainbow. rainbow all the way. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you get an extra one. And um, it's just- uh, it makes my heart joyful. And I think a lot of believers have felt um, nervous. Like even I had a cousin who loved rainbows growing up. She had Noah's Ark um, in her her room and had rainbows everywhere. And now a lot of Christians are like, I don't know if I can wear the rainbow because of what it has come to mean. So let's go into what has the rainbow come to mean, And also how, how did the pride flag come to be a rainbow? Yeah, so um, the 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 pride flag, which is is what they actually now even call it. They call it more the pride banner or the pride flag than they even do the rainbow banner. And that it was created by um, actually a a very prolific. Uh, in your face, um, a homosexual man. Um, he was called the the Betsy, the gay Betsy Ross, right? Wow. Uh, Gilbert Baker. Uh, he was a a known uh, drag queen and even pedophile, and um, he um, uh, he got this idea that for the San Francisco uh, Pride week, I think it was in the, in the seventies. Um, I, I wrote about it in the article, the article can, you can actually read the details and the footnotes and stuff like that, uh, on, uh, stephenblack.org or, or firststone.org. But this, this, um, this guy came up with the idea, we need a banner like flags to represent our people group. And so that's where it originally came from. It, it came out of the idea that we're going to use the uh, the the idea of a multifaceted uh, behavioral community and the different ways that sexuality is expressed. Mm -hmm. And so you have the now, of course, the letters keep growing, uh, but it's you know the L, the G, the B back in that day. Now it's a, there's a T and a Q, and then you know you'll see an I and an A and an A. And keeps now going. A it just and keeps a B. on going. Yeah, I mean, and these these actual letters really do mean something, mm -hmm. and and people need to pay attention to that plus sign because it continues on. And, uh, you know, some of the saddest things now are the manifestations or the what I call the morphing of this idea of the, the rainbow uh, image of God that is now a six, uh, you know, street banner uh, that is morphed now into all kinds of even dark colors like blue and black. And, mm -hmm. and then they brought in light pink and light blue for transgenderism and but the blue and the black, you know, uh, the idea of sadomasochism and mm -hmm. leather and torture. I mean, it, it's really morphed into all these different layers of, of behavior. And so mm -hmm. it represents people need to understand when they see the what they call the pride banner or the gay flag. It represents people's sexual uh, tastes, desires, and behaviors. And, uh, and that's what uh, Baker wanted to do. And, and he was able to do that. And by the end of his life, he started calling it the pride banner. And so that's a little bit of the history behind that six veined flag that we call the, the gay flag or the, the, the pride banner. Well, even just going into the name of it, pride banner, um, right. Stephen, what is scripture? How does God view that word pride? <laughs> I mean, it is really what's beside the idea of pride uh, is the, the sin of what is called the sin of Lucifer, which is the idea of exalting himself above God because he was the head, head cherubim, the head uh, worship leader of heaven. And so he wanted to be exalted above God. And we, you know, if you read the story, you know that he brought down a devastating fall. And so the scripture says, before there is destruction on the land, before there is destruction in a person's life, they're going to be, uh, they're going to be eaten up with pride. You will see pride in the land. You will see an arrogance. Uh, that is lifted up that unfortunately brings destruction, just as we see 
in Lucifer, who is now called, uh, you know, the slanderer, the devil. Um, he is the darkest of all of God's created beings, and he is a created being. He was never created uh, to be evil, but he chose evil. And just like uh, God made us free will agents, um, obviously the angels are too, because one third of them chose to follow Lucifer and they fell. So this, this sin, the sin of pride, is one of the most egregious sins. And it's in, in uh, 1 John chapter 2, it says, Love not the world, ne neither the things that are in the world, for the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life yes. is not of the Father, but is of this world. And anyone who is operating in those three uh, veins of sin in their soul do not know God. Mm -hmm. And so when we see, honestly, I, I tell people, and I even wrote about this, when I see that banner, it, it invokes a sadness inside of me. When I see the banner of pride, it makes me think about what's coming. It, it makes me think uh, about God's also uh, parallel promise, which people are not catching this, because that parallel promise in Genesis is that he will not flood the earth or he will not judge the earth by water. Right. But the parallel promise is God is actually going to judge the earth again. Mm -hmm. And ironically, it is paralleled with the idea of fire, Kendra. Mm -hmm. It's parallel with the idea of fire. And it's coming. <laughs> and, and the very judgment that we see in Genesis on the land of Sodom and Gomorrah, the idea when we read in, in Jude's epistle or in the words of Paul uh, to Timothy or, or in Romans 1, we, we see that judgment on sexual immorality uh, was uh, the judgment of Sodom and Gomorrah and mm -hmm. that it was met with fire. But Stephen, and, uh, you're talking about doom and gloom and fire, and that doesn't really add up with this like loving, inclusive God that everybody seems to be talking about. Seems like you're tapping into an aspect of God that is not often discussed in culture. But well, it, you know that I'm glad you brought that up because when you when you think about a refiner, uh, you know he's he's trying to create something beautiful with melting down gold right? A refiner in the smithing of making something really beautiful, a, a beautiful piece of jewelry. Uh, I'm always reminded of that imagery that we see about the burning of the gold. And he has to wipe off the, the top, what's called the dross. Mm -hmm. And he wipes that off because it's called impurity. Well, God is holy. And we in humanity, unfortunately, have tried to make God in our image, the image of sinful and fallen man. But God, his, his very essence of being is fire because mm. he is so holy. Mm. It, it, it is likened unto, in the Revelation, 10,000 sons. Uh, that The idea of seeing the face of Jesus the first time is going to be so startling that a no human being, Scripture makes it very clear that our God is a consuming fire, that no human being in, in this fallen mortal state could ever uh, even approach the, the, the presence of God because he mm. is so perfect in love. See, it really is about this, this, this smithing of something so beautiful that God has actually intended for humanity. Mm -hmm. And that is to culminate all of this with this beautiful crescendo in heaven of a marriage. Yeah. And, you know, that's why I love you, you know, what you guys did with uh, Amer the American Family Studios in creating the movie in his image, mm -hmm. because in his image is to crescendo in this beautiful place of the complement of male and female and the complement of Jesus Christ and the church uh, that Paul talks about in Ephesians 5. So really, when you look at all of this and unpack scripture, you see that God really is an amazing, beautiful, fiery passion of love, a love unlike any human beings have ever 
experienced. But someday those who have been purchased, and I pray that anyone Mm -hmm. listening would please surrender their lives to Jesus Christ as Lord so that they can have eternity and live with this God of love forever. And the reason why he must bring judgment is because he has a plan. He has a plan to to recreate the entire earth and make it perfect once again, uh, like it was before the fall. Mm -hmm. And that's why the entire earth uh, in the prophecy of uh, Peter's second epistle that says that God is going to absolutely burn the entire face of the Mm -hmm. earth off. And so it will be recreated. Um, It's hard for us to even imagine that. I mean, the only thing that we even have close to to seeing something like that would be uh, in World War II uh, with the uh, atomic bomb droppings uh, in in Japan. Uh, And some of that was so decimated that it was changed forever. Well, that's what God is going to do to the entire face of the earth. And uh, and those who have been blood-bought in Jesus Christ our Lord, that his sacrifice Hmm. brought about absolute redemption for any man, any woman, any human being that's made in his image, Hmm. if they would just surrender to his love. And so it really is about love, but it is also understanding how holy and yes. awesome and beautiful he is. That's why I'm in, I'm so in love with God. Yes, and it about, shows, Stephen. Yeah, I love his that creation. You... It's just amazing. Yeah. Can you imagine ten million colors? Mm. That's what re- the Revelation talks about. The throne of God and even the angels that He sends. He sends out of that bow. That 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 place of judgment from the throne of God. That is a mm. a spherical rainbow can you imagine a sphere that is a rainbow with 10 million colors That's incredible <laughs> that love- is what we see the imagery in the revelation mm. and so what do we have satan coming in sexual perversion and distortion and identity conflict and yes we need to have a lot of mercy on people uh knowing when you do what we do in pastoral care and unpacking the causality behind why people go into homosexuality it's it's tragic because most of these people high more than 55 60 percent of of the women especially the women it's much higher have, have been sexually molested Mm. prepubescent. Mm. And so, you know, we should have great compassion, but we should have enough love and care to call these people out to say, come out of this before the final judgment comes. Because that, that, that image of that rainbow, it's actually pride. It's the representation mm. of pride flying over a people group that embrace sexual immorality. And that to me is tragic. I love that you mentioned, though, the hope that we have in Christ and the the concept of God coming to rescue his bride from this coming judgment, because um, scripture says that, uh, you know, I brought you to my banqueting table. His banner over me is love. And this is really special. My husband and I, um, when when we got married, we actually got married under a hoopah, like the, uh-huh, the yeah, Hebrew, yeah. you know, covering. And there's this well, that promise. Is the picture of that. It is. His banner over me is love. Uh-huh. And it's it's this idea of God wants to take his bride to be with him. And if if you're watching this right now and this coming judgment, um, yeah, sometimes your heart starts beating a little heavy when, when you start talking about these very true and weighty things. Um, and I encourage you not to not to just click away because it's scary, but to to recognize there is a judgment side of God, but there is a love side of God. And for those um, in the LGBTQ community that are watching this, God loves you and he wants you to be a part of himself. He wants to take you as his bride. He wants to purify you. He wants to change you and he loves you. He wants his banner over you to be the banner of love. Yeah. I mean, again, Kendra, we cannot um, reiterate it enough about that smelter. Mm. He wants to make something really beautiful. And if, and if he loves his bride, 
and God loves his creation. He wants to remove the dross of our lives. And that's why even trial, tribulation, you know, I've had a lot, a lot of terrible things happen in my life. Mm. I've seen a lot of death. I've seen a lot of suffering and uh, won't pull out all, all of the things, but it's been rough. And people, you know, always want to point to the idea that somehow God isn't loving. Actually, God is very loving in that every one of those things, even the smelter, even the smith, the guy who is making that that cleansing of that, that purification mm. of that gold, his heart is to make something beautiful. And that is always the heart of God. The anger of man doesn't work the righteousness of God, but God's wrath, God's holiness is always redemptive. Mm -hmm. God's heart, even in his judgment with the flood on the earth, was always about redemption. This is the heart of the creator of the universe. And unfortunately, those who don't understand that or know that, it's because they really have not been integrated into the reality of the revelation of the love of God that is given to us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Mm. And he's made that very plain all across the earth now. And, uh, and now even with science and DNA and microspace and outer space, there's no excuse. There is intelligent design and that intelligent design is a creator. Mm -hmm. And he is screaming in these last days when the prophecy out of Daniel would say that knowledge would increase in the last days. He's screaming actually to mankind, I'm coming and judgment is at the door. And ironically, we have a pride banner over a people group that mm. their idea of diversity is actual all the different things you can do sexually. Mm. And that's tragic because God is calling for repentance of that and saying, if you want your sin, you can have it, but I have something so much greater, so much better for you. Please, please, please repent and turn to me because I love you. And that is the heart of God in all of this. So when we see that that pride banner, that's what I'm struck with. I'm struck with deep grief and sorrow over a people group that are so deceived. I have family members. I have loved ones. I have people that I know, have known for 40 years that are under that banner of judgment. And, and it just it breaks my heart, Kendra. It really does. Stephen, before we close here, would would you mind praying over those that are watching this video and they just feel really surrounded by pride flags and that this is all encompassing? Maybe they even have people in their life that are struggling with this and they're just discouraged um, and they're in the middle of that purification process that you talked about. Would you close us out in a prayer? Sure, I would love to. So, Father, the revelation of who you are in the love of God and the the absolute beauty of heaven. I pray for that continued revelation in heavy hearts watching, in heavy hearts of family members that have gay identified loved ones. Lord, that there that you have a plan of a sphere of beautiful colors and, and beautiful love to change the heart of a person who is in bondage. So Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that you would give the hope of the beautiful testimony, but also the testimony of your word that you are faithful, that you are always a fulfiller of promises, and your fulfiller to redeem mankind. The, the, that faithful promise is true for any sinner who it's it, where it's still called today that they would surrender their lives to you. So, Father, in Jesus' name, help every heart to have the joy of you and your salvation that is listening in, in Jesus' name and for Jesus' sake, I pray. Amen. Amen. Stephen, one more time, how can they read your um, article, Prophecy of Pride? It is at stephenblack.org, and it is also at firststone.org. That's our ministry website. Yes. And if you're watching this, we've had a lot of people contact us that have family members or loved ones that are that are struggling with these issues. Um, I encourage you to go check out First Stone's website. They have some amazing resources um, and ways that you can connect with others um, that are similarly struggling and support groups and some really awesome things. So Stephen, thank you so much for being with us today. Yeah, it's always a pleasure. Thank you. God bless you, Kendra.